So what's going on here, guys? Hey, so we're at AlienCon 2019 here out here in LA, and um, we're here with Falcon Space Program. My name's Jeremy. I'm the alien scientist. On, um, Mark Sokol from Mark. Falcon Space. Uh, we're trying to discover anti-gravity, and we have an array of different experiments set up to try, and we're trying to share all of our ideas with the public and see how they can help us and how we can help them create disclosure in 2019. So I have a bachelor's degree in physics and I've been studying just everything UFO technology, anti-gravity, invisibility, all stuff like that for about 20 years now. Um, I have a huge collection of uh, data and files and papers, um, some of which have disappeared from the internet and uh, for a good reason I, I believe. Um, but we have limited, we kind of narrowed it down to about five different options for simple like tabletop experiments that we can actually build and, and perform for people to try to verify and vet these things. And we've kind of laid them out for people and we're trying to get people's opinions and ideas uh, and, and also, also their money to help us fund these experiments so that we can get actual answers and results uh, and real science from them. So um, we'll start with, uh, why don't you start with the Boyd Bushman effect and uh, kind of explain that one. Okay, um, for anybody who understands these theories, we have a, a keychain bottle opener, and next time you drink a beer, you can think about what we've learned over here at AlienCon. Right. <laughs> so, first of all, this is the bunked pile, where we have the Boyd-Bushman effect. This was one of the easiest, cheapest experiments to try. This is one that we actually tried. Um, it basically claims that if you have two magnets in opposition, um, they will fall slower than the speed of gravity. So, this has been tried by a couple of places. So we're trying to figure out why does it work. Um, we put together two magnets, extremely powerful. They are so powerful that we had to cover it with this cardboard box so as not to get, uh, for not to be dangerous to us. Yeah. Um, you could crush your finger if you get a metal, piece of metal caught. And between. what we realized is that the conductivity of a metal, you can feel it against it. If there's any conductivity to space-time, it's possible that this object, as it falls through space-time, um, is reorienting and uh, reverse orienting the uh, electrons, the quantum fields, the quantum fields that are that are around it, possibly slowing down its descent. But there's no practical place to take this. Yeah, so although it kind of works, yeah, you can keep on dropping it down and it's, and watching as it falls a little slower. But the point is not to fall slower. We're trying to actually take off. Yeah, we we don't want to fall slow. We want we want to actually warp space time and, and build them like something that exactly. actually affects gravity. So you, you got to think about that. You know, the, how big of a magnet would you actually need to make to you know if this just slows down gravity a little bit? How big would you actually need to make a magnetic field to actually I stop it or think reverse it's, it all? First of all, this is a, I mean? these are very powerful magnets over here. This, these are well. That's what I'm saying. It, it, the, the, the powerful the, the power of the magnet that you need for to make a practical experiment with this would be way too high. You know what I mean? It would it would it would literally rip all the lights out of the ceiling and the, and the, and the fillings But what if it was the change in magnetic field that created the warp? What if you had two um, sheets of opposing uh, magnetic fields that were spinning against each other and I had think, different uh, changes yeah, I in magnetic field? I think where you're going field. with that would, it would be an interesting idea to, to uh, measure the, the induction or the eddy currents in space-time and how, how space-time, empty space-time actually is. Yeah, so if we had like a sheet of these fields. Facing one way and another of them facing the other way, we could sort of spin them around and see if there's we any magnetic field. We also have the, the Bifel Brown experiment too, so I don't want to spend too much time. This was an easy one, a good starter, uh, startup experiment for us to do to get kind of like a basis going. Um, the other one we've kind of tackled a lot so far, we're almost done with, is, is the Bifel Brown effect, um, and, and trying to just rediscover the night the effect that was discovered in the 1920s by Thomas Townsend Brown. He has a um, patent um, on it. It's called the Gravitator experiment. Uh, the yeah, Gravitator. This is the Gravitator. This is different than the lifters or the, those uh, triangular lifter craft that uh, run on ion wind. This was a, a completely we're, isolated. We're trying to isolate this and eliminate all ion wind in the experiments and see if there's an effect, an actual effect without ion wind. So that's that's the real issue with the with the Bifel Brown effect is whether it's ion wind or whether there's an actual you know warp drive effect uh, or, or a, uh, a force that's produced by the and the gravitator is different than the lifter devices which is is a point I want to distinguish and make for people so we're really trying to um, build an, an ideal super capacitor or ultra capacitor which is kind of what the gravitator was uh, although using more modern materials and methods uh, to, to, to try to um, increase the efficiency and also the um, Reduce all the ion wind. Uh, we were going to even do the experiment in an, in an 
submerged in oil to you know so that you know eliminating uh, gases around around the object too. So that's another one we want to tackle and really like get down to the nuts and bolts on. And then then probably the next one after that I think is a good one to do is the whole pod clip knob thing. Um, this came out in the BBC News. Uh, Boeing was trying to defy gravity. This was in 2002. Um, Boeing Aerospace did a ton of research into um, effects of you know rotating superconductors and superfluids and the, the, the various effects that these produce in a laboratory that, that were anomalous. And um, there's been a bit of discrepancy. There's a lot of people that came out and debunked it and said it was, didn't work and that you know even NASA's uh, Whit Brantley from the NASA's Advanced Propulsion Laboratory did a uh, replication uh, down in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I knew one of the guys who was there um, and, at, and helped with uh, you know oversee that kind of replication and he gave me some insights into some things that were done wrong by NASA and, uh, and some of these other scientists that sort of have dismissed this effect. We want to reinvestigate it, um, really make sure uh, with the science because the argument with them is that that you know you, you can see in, the, in the, the NASA replication video the size of the diameter of the superconductor disk that they used was about the size of a quarter and um, the one that Pod Klitnov used in his experiments were like six to nine inches they were really large diameter superconductor disks and he said that the diameter is really key for getting the effect because it increases with the, the radius squared so if you have a really small radius you're gonna get a really really tiny effect that's probably not measurable and why, why it was uh, it was um, indistinguishable from background in the experiments that so-called debunked it. So we want to revisit the pod Klitnov experiment to, to try to make sure that, you know, there's definitely something interesting going on with these condensed matter states um, and, and, and quantum effects. And I really think that the, the key breakthroughs that we're going to make in, in science and in, in physics in the next uh, hundred years or so are going to be in our understanding of quantum mechanics quantum physics and also what actually space-time is itself, what space and time are. Space-time is what it is and how it works, how to affect it and how it can be manipulated using some of these more interesting technologies. Which brings us to the fifth and final, um, is this the, uh, the fifth or is this the fourth, uh, I forget. Um, but this is the, I think, the, the most important creme de la creme. This is, this is the crown jewels, basically, that, that has been released and come out in the last, uh, just the last, you know, few years or so. Like, I think the last year or two is, is a lot of this stuff is really breaking. And it has to do with quasi-crystals, metamaterials, um, what are metallic glasses, and um, some very interesting material science um, that, again, deals with quantum effects that affect space-time. And... Um, I think that these are going to be, this is, this is the most interesting stuff that I've seen so far in my 20 years of anti-gravity research. I think that this is, this is um, the most highest probability of success. Um, it's interesting that some of these studies were actually done on pieces of materials that claimed were recovered from UFOs, which is, uh, I, I thought it was, it was interesting because um, if you have a piece of a crashed alien spacecraft and you put it in a laboratory and see how it works, which is what these studies say that our government did with our tax dollars, um, you look at the study and it says that, that, that there's this suit, these types of materials that when you hit them with a certain frequency laser, um, they actually float or lose weight in it or have these you know anomalous effects. And um, I've been doing a ton of research into this, the, the quantum science, the quantum effects of it, or what are called in optics, uh, polariconic cyton pairs and the ability to produce antimatter on demand or, or pull particles out of the vacuum, separate, you know, polar, polarizing, polarizing the vacuum using these uh, types of materials with um, the, the polariton condensates. The way, the way I understood it from the Alzafan experiment, which I think has Oh, that's very, the Alzafan. That's, that's, it's that's very the similar one. to the Alzafan experiment. Everything you're talking about with the quasi-crystals, I now yeah. see that they all come together with this guy, this Alzafan guy. By the way, the way yeah. I was introduced to this was one of the comments on one of your videos. Somebody just like commented about a uh, paper. There's two copies of it, yeah. by the way. Yeah, this is from Boeing Aerospace. There's, there's two copies of this, but um, and this is another another research study that was done. This is this goes back to 1981 though, which is even more interesting because it's it's a lot older. And there's an interesting experiment in here that he outlines for um, for how to test uh, how to test some of these theories. And uh, it's, again, this is a good place to start, and I think there's a lot of overlap in, in the understandings of, of how all these things, these anomalous effects that have been kind of explained away by our, our best scientists, 
and and the, and the uh, all the technologies that are coming out now. I think there's there's some overlap with, with these quantum effects that were not quite well understood and are much, getting much better understood now as science progresses. So, anyways, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction and uh, let you know what we're doing and what we're talking about here and uh, what, we, what we have planned. Um, the end goal eventually is we want to build craft. We want we to take, build actual flying craft. We want to build craft. If the um, if whatever it takes to get there, we need to build the craft. We need to fly off and. For my research, I'm confident technology. that our government has already done this. Yes, they have. 20 years ago or more, I, I believe that we are in possession of craft of incredible maneuverable capabilities and, and, and technologies that have not been released to the public. And sort of what we want to do is, is force disclosure through technology. Mm -hmm. and that's yes, it. we need to force uh, disclosure through technology. And the, um, I think the way to do it, I agree with Jeremy over here, is the Alzafan experiment. Alzafan experiment, in my opinion, gives a, a unified field theory for physics and explains uh, what anti-gravity truly is, which is uh, like polarizing the vacuum or, or disconnecting yourself from the, uh, the, the space-time vacuum. Of the matrix. From the network of the matrix, basically by organizing the nuclei of the atoms all on one axis. That's 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 what I think it's doing. It's I think that's what's happening in the pod cloud experiment because you have a Bose-Einstein condensate, but then they rotate it and that aligns the spin pole, the spins in it. Oh you know yeah, I mean? that's right. So it's the same. It's it, it's very interesting. That's true. Thing. That's the exact same experiment. Right. So it, it, there's a lot of overlap. There's a, a, lot there's a connection things, between all of these uh, three experiments that we've found. At least we think that's our hypothesis, and we want to test it. And we want to we want to test at least one of them. To uh, I want to test happens. all of them. I would love to too. But and I want know, to advance our understanding of and, and, and the physics. Well, if we find if we the get right, somebody who get find the right somebody donors, who drop a hundred grand, I think we do all three of them. I think if we got to Bigelow, I think Bigelow. Oh, for sure. If we got to Bigelow, you know, then then the men in black would have to come in. But I don't know because he's so point. like deep state. It's like crazy. I don't know. Anyways, he's that's another conversation state. for another time. Uh, we'll see you here at <laughs> AlienCon. See us at AlienCon.